Well, good afternoon, Selma. <laughs> Visitors and distinguished guests, I am Kendra Angion, and I am proud to say that I am from the historic city of Selma, Alabama. I am a secondary education English major at my HBCU, Alabama State University, where I currently serve as the 82nd Miss Alabama State University. I would also like to add that I am a member of the Beta Pi chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. As a product of the Black Belt, granddaughter of Wilcox County civil rights activist, Mrs. Rosetta Angion, and niece of a Bloody Sunday foot soldier and student activist, Mary Angion Robinson and Alberta Buchanan, I am delighted for this opportunity to reflect on and show respect for the courageous actions of approximately 600 marchers who attempted to cross the bridge on March 7, 1965. Today, as I stand on the foot of this historic landmark, I have the privilege of introducing a woman whose passion and determination for serving others has led her to become one of the most influential women in history the Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. It speaks volumes to have the Vice President of the United States in Selma on this historic occasion as we commemorate and celebrate the sacrifice of blood, sweat, and tears that were shed by so many to secure voting rights. Your presence underscores the importance of this event for advancing civil rights for many throughout our nation. So it is my prayer that for many years to come, that vice presidents and other distinguished guests will make the annual pilgrimage to Selma, Alabama to help us remember and recommit to this worthy cause. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you all the vice president of the United States of America, the honorable vice president Kamala Harris. <laughs> Good afternoon. Kendra, thank you for those inspiring words. In the great tradition of Alabama State, you are a leader of outstanding passion and purpose, and it is wonderful to share the stage with you. So, Selma, before I begin, I, I want to say a few words about the situation in, in Ukraine. Today, the eyes of the world are on Ukraine and the brave people who are fighting to protect their country and their democracy. And their bravery is a reminder that freedom and democracy can never be taken for granted by any of us. With that, it is a privilege to be among so many distinguished leaders dedicated activists, friends, and American heroes, and to be with so many members of Congress, of our cabinet, who are all representing our nation and representing our administration. It is a particular honor to be joined by the family of Congressman John Lewis and the family of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. So today we, we gather here on hallowed ground. It was a chilly Sunday morning, 57 years ago, when 600 brave individuals set out from Selma. They were marching for the most fundamental right of American citizenship, the right to vote. They knew that if they wanted true freedom, 
if they wanted to claim what was theirs by birth and by right, they had to march on this bridge on that day. They were prepared for the worst. And on this bridge, on that day, the worst found them. Their peaceful protest was met with crushing violence. They were kneeling when the state troopers charged. They were praying when the billy cubs struck. On this bridge, on that day, those brave marchers continued to push forward to secure the freedom to vote. And they were pushed back. Today, we stand on this bridge at a different time. We again, however, find ourselves caught in between, between injustice and justice, between disappointment and determination, still in a fight to form a more perfect union. And nowhere is that more clear than when it comes to the ongoing fight to secure the freedom to vote. A record number of people cast their ballots in the 2020 elections. It was a triumph of democracy in many ways. But not everyone saw it that way. Some saw it as a threat. And so, as powerful people have done many times in our nation's history, they launched an assault on the freedom to vote. Across the country, states passed anti-voting laws, laws that ban drop boxes and restrict early voting, laws that make it illegal to give food and water to voters who are standing and waiting in line. Laws that, put simply, make it much more difficult for people to vote with an expectation that then we will not vote. Undemocratic laws, un-American laws. And so last year, we all joined together. We locked arms and lifted our voices and fought to pass federal voting rights legislation. We brought the Freedom to Vote Act, and yes, the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act to the floor of the United States Senate. And on the night of January 19th, every Republican senator in the United States Senate voted to block passage of this law. Over the past few months, I have traveled our country talking with so many people about our fight, our collective fight, to safeguard and strengthen the freedom to vote. Faith leaders, community leaders, students, activists, and organizers. And yes, people are tired and frustrated and at times scared. Scared that we risk losing the rights we fought so hard to win. I believe at this moment we are faced with a choice, a choice that we have faced many times before. Do we stand or do we fight? Gathered at this bridge, reflecting on its history, yes, I know the path forward is clear. Remember, it took three tries for the marchers to cross the bridge. It took their sweat, their tears, their blood. It took their resilience, their determination, and their courage. And yes, it even took the protection of the National Guard and federal marshals. In a moment of great uncertainty, those marchers pressed forward, and they crossed. 
We must do the same. We must lock our arms and march forward. We will not let setbacks stop us. We know that honoring the legacy of those who marched then demands that we continue to push Congress to pass federal voting rights legislation. And it also demands we continue to push the Senate to not allow an arcane rule to deny us this sacred right. It demands we continue to lift up state legislatures that have passed pro-voter laws and that we keep fighting to prevent the passage of anti-voter laws. It demands we keep going to court to defend this sacred freedom, and it demands we register voters, volunteer as election workers, and yes, of course, drive souls to the polls. And none of this is new, especially to so many of you who have been in this fight for so long. So I am here, again, here in Selma, to say thank you for your work, your sacrifice, and your dedication. And I have come here today to also remind you that we all stand together. President Biden and I are working for this cause every day. We have put the full power of the executive branch behind our shared effort. And if we all continue to work together, to march together, to fight together, we will secure the freedom to vote. Selma, the future of our democracy is being decided now by you, by us, by the people. And ultimately, you are the ones, we are the ones, who must protect the freedom to vote. And we must not stop there. Those who marched across this bridge, yes, they marched for the freedom to vote, they also march for all the rights and freedoms that voting unlocks. They marched for economic justice, for social justice, for racial justice. And we must do the same. We must fight to ensure all the people of our nation, no matter where they start, have the opportunity to succeed. We must fight to move our nation forward while we reflect on why it matters. Just think, last week, President Biden made history when he nominated the first black woman, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, to the highest court in our land. The court where decisions are made about the constitutional rights and liberties and freedoms of every American to generational effect. And I'll tell you what I think you know. Judge Jackson is a phenomenal jurist with a record of excellence, a record that proves her commitment not only to public service, but to equal justice and equal rights. And as she makes history, Judge Jackson, like us all, stands on the shoulders of giants. She and we are their legacy. The legacy of those who are with us today, Annie Pearl Avery, Charles Malden, Bernard Lafayette, Cheyenne Webb Kreisberg, the leg legacy of those who are smiling down on us, Marie Foster, J.D. Hunter, C.J. Adams, Amelia Boynton Robinson, and all of those courageous foot soldiers for freedom who named 
and whose names we know and sometimes names we will not know, but who lift us up nonetheless. The last time I was in Selma was the last time Congressman John Lewis stood on this bridge. For his whole life, and especially that day, John Lewis was the embodiment of strength and resilience, the epitome of dignity, grace, and perseverance. As he stood here that day, you could see the body that carried him across this bridge all those years ago had become fragile, but the spirit that carried him was as strong as ever. John Lewis, well, he never gave up the fight. He returned to this bridge again and again and again. It is that clarity of purpose, that relentless dedication, that spirit, the spirit of Selma that we summon today. We will keep fighting. We will keep organizing. We will keep shouting. We will keep making good trouble. And we will march on until victory is won. Thank you all. Thank you.